loved it when, when I used to be part of an education department in one of the top attractions over in Liverpool and the children and the way in which they related to the song and it's the way the children learnt about the world and what was happening in the world. And that was John, he told them that. It's just, I don't know about what I so. Well, I uh, just read a quote, I was looking up just the little things um, yeah. this morning. And I read a quote which I hadn't actually seen before, and that was that um, John said about Imagine himself, and it was a quote, um, I really love this song, it's as good as anything I wrote with the Beatles. So, I mean, that's John's only uh, quote for that. The song itself, um, well, it's self-explanatory. Um, can I tell a funny little story? When we were, my partner Roger, I don't know if he's in the back there, I can't see. And I, um, yes, he's just bent down. Um, worked in India for two years, on and off with Save the Children. And we went to a site in central South India, 50 degrees, nothing new there, no water, nothing new there either. And um, they asked me, I was asked by Oxfam to write um, a proposal for money for the women, because you give the land to the women and food gets grown, you give the land to the men and it doesn't always happen. So this was Greening Green Bank and Oxfam working together, Women's Bank. So I finished this 10,000 word um, uh, proposal, all handwritten, got it typed up in Hyderabad. I thought, it's all figures, acreage, hectares, peanuts, sunflowers, I thought Panchayats, the local councils, we're dealing with the, the local councils all over the world, believe me. And uh, I thought, how can I end this to make it lighter? It's so heavy. So I thought, I know, I'll write the words to Imagine, <laughs> which I did at the bottom. And the uh, representative from Oxford said, Oh, this is very good. Very good. We hope we get the land, uh, we hope we get the money. What is this you have written at the bottom because it was handwritten? And I said, oh, it's just a minor Western poet. <laughs> <laughs> and the story is, back in the foothills, we were in the Gandhi ashram, also uh, sort of working, having a great time, I have to tell you. And the girls sang us everything, you know, digging for food and watering, and they sang us all their songs, and they said, you sing to us, you sing to us. So after we'd done green sleeves and Michael rowed the boat ashore and heaven knows what else, Roger and I are thinking, what can we do? And my 14-year-old son was with us, and he said, well, what about Imagine? Oh, yes! So we sat down with pen and paper, and about an hour later, we had Imagine, and then Imagine crossed out, and then there's something to do with the world, and we got a bus the next morning for 30 miles, uh, to phone a friend back in Chester to say, Margaret, Margaret, don't talk, this is costing a lot of money. What are the words to imagine? She said, I don't know. <laughs> and she said, leave it with me. And about 10 days later, they arrived in the post, the words to imagine. So that's the only reason I could write them on the report. <laughs> that's that famous song. <laughs> because we're nobody singing the words. It's so really now those that. students sit <laughs> there, if it's carried on, they will be singing Imagine. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you, Julia. Well, now, one of the things that we are most proud about the new centre is the aspect of responsible tourism that we hope that we are displaying through the work that we're doing with the young adults. And I know it's something that you're particularly passionate about, Mr. Julia. So I thought I'd, I'd allow you to introduce Alan and his team as they come and share with us. Yes. Alan is the, um, the team leader, team coach, and he's got all this so much of the party because, he, because he's in it, right inside it. So it, everything is much better coming from Alan. So off you come, on you come.
share some of the insights and some of the successes that we've had with our programme so far. So, the first thing I'd like to share with you is a photograph. This photograph was taken exactly two years ago in this very ballroom right in the far corner. And on the photograph we have some staff from Strawberry Field and we have some of our trainees from our very first cohort. So much has changed in two years throughout the world, but so much has changed for our trainees as well. Some of them have got jobs, so they're in paid employment, which is fantastic. One of them's engaged to be married, and one has even become a mum. So it's great just to look back over the two years and see what's happened with our people. I just wanted to sort of set the scene with steps to work. Julia has conveyed her passion about it already and what the need is. Nationally, only 6% of people with a learning disability are in paid employment, despite the fact that more than half of them want paid jobs. So the vision and the mission of Steps to Work is to drive that figure up, particularly in the Liverpool City region. You know, we believe that there is a job out there for everybody, and we will do our hardest to find the job for that people. The other thing on the slide as well is some research on learning disability today, which says there's lots of employment programs out there, but very few of them are actually 